trying to haul two or three of you with me, and I, if I can you do that, I've done a good bet, you know. So I've got an outline up here. You, you follow. God's not a God of confusion. He's a God of order. You, you order. You study it. You prepare. I read the books on, on homiletics. That's supposed to be you don't preach it. I read those books. Let me tell you something. You can get a guy with an excellent outline, but if he's got no heart in it, it's not going to work. You ought to have both. The Word of God's orderly. God's orderly. This whole thing's put together in an orderly fashion. Walk out there and look at the star. Look at the way everything works. Sun's going to come up in the morning. Certain things going to happen. God's got an He's a God of order. Be orderly, but get away from this having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The Bible says, from such turn away. Stay away from it. Here's something else you got to fight. <laughs> Boy, this is a real battle. Ever learning. Never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Education. Education is one of our gods in America. Folks think if they get an education, they've got it all. There are a lot of PhDs going to die and go to hell. You have all kinds of education. That's not going to help you with spiritual matters. God's made the wisdom of this world foolishness. Now you ought to get education, but it ought not be a God to you. You ought to learn your math and learn your geography and learn your history. But learn it to the glory of God. Know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Education. A lot of people go to hell right out of college. They leave church, they go to college, and they learn all that stuff, and they think they've learned everything. They ain't no more than their grandmother knew. She believed God created the heaven and the earth, and you come out believing everything evolved because you read a little sissy pant man book somewhere. Lord Jesus Christ said God created everything. That's enough for me. Of course, I've already commented on the matter of immorality. This immorality runs through the whole thing. Immorality. That stuff will get you. Verse 6 says, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust. Well, ladies, I don't know. Well, I think, you know, you get in the middle of everything, don't you? You know, get a lot of blame. Now, I, I want to tell you something. A godly woman, there's nothing like a godly woman. I'm going to tell you something else. There ain't nothing like an ungodly one either. Now, I believe this. I believe that husbands in here will be better husbands because the wives are better wives. And I believe husbands will be poor husbands if a wife is a poor wife. In other words, men, we may be the head of the home, but I want to tell you something. Uh, woman's pretty much a gauge of things. Now you look at it. You look in the, you look in the Word of God. Somebody, some fellow says, I'm ahead of the home. Yeah, but that woman, she's a, she's a neck that turns a head. You know. <laughs> fellow said, my wife and I, we got a 50-50 marriage. I tell my wife what to do, and she tells me where to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. Um, you women... You keep, you keep a godly standard. And you young ladies, you keep a godly standard. And I will tell you, you're going to help the men be better men. You're going to help these young men be better young men. 
but you let the bars down. And you're going to lower character on the whole, on the whole. You get a, you get a, I, I tell you, you get a, a woman with godly language, godly conversation. I'll tell you something, you got something. You got a real blessing. You get a woman that watches, guards her tongue, and she doesn't become a gossiper or a busybody. I will tell you something, you got a lady that's a blessing to everybody that comes around. But you get a woman that's always gossiping. Always running, running her tongue, always talking about somebody, always trying to dig up some tidbit and carry it off somewhere and carry it and give it to the first person she can find. I want to tell you something. She's a scourge and a source of more devilment in a church or community than anywhere, any, almost anything. Need me an amen corner up here. Amen corner. It's true. That's true. Lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust. I believe women can stop a lot of stuff. I really believe so. You may be physically not as large. You may not. Uh, you may not be able to uh, uh, arm wrestle anybody and win arm wrestling. I'm going to tell you something. You can win the battle by having godly character. And you can affect, you can affect the course of things by your godly behavior. You just look in the Word of God and you look at the influence those women had by Look at it. See, I don't believe it's good for a man to be alone. You understand? I don't believe it's good for him to be alone. You, you ladies and you young ladies, you ought to strive to be a godly person in your in your in your life so god will use you i thank god that my wife had some character whenever i did not have let me tell you what what happened in my life and i can say this i know this happened i'm not guess, i'm not guessing about things now i was mr tough guy okay no one would tell me what to do Understand? No woman tell me what to do. I do what I wanted to, go where I wanted to, do my own thing, whatever. And that's what I was doing. And my wife said, I'm going to start living for God. And she told me, she said, Well, what you do, if you want to do it, you go ahead and do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to live like God would have me to live. At that time, I was going to the Honky Tonks, was playing in a band, and was going, playing in a band. You know what my wife said? My wife should go, and I guess she went to keep an eye, but she told me, she said, I'm not going to go anymore because I don't believe God wants me in those places. This is back now with 24, 23, 24 years old. She said, I'm going to start going to church. You can sit here at home if you want to, but I'm going to go to church, and we'll take our children to church, two girls in, about three and four years old, something like that. And she'd get up and she'd dress Cindy and Sandra and put their little clothes on, put their little shoes on them, get them all fancied up nice. And I'd be sitting in the chair, you know, unshaved. You know, waiting to get away so I could have a <laughs> cigarette and a beer or whatever. And I'd see them go out of the house. Oh, I do, you know, on one hand, I'd be, burn, be burning me up, but on the other hand, deep down inside, I'd just be gnawing at my guts because I knew that she was doing what was right. They'd go to church, and I'd sit there and I'd think. I thank God tonight that my wife had some character and set some principles in her life and she lived by those things because of that godly woman right there. God used her.
testimony and used her influence to open my eyes and see I was a sinner on my way to hell and I needed to get saved. Huh. Thank God for it. Listen, there's no doubt in my mind. You men, you, you can relate to this. We might be big, tough guys, but I want to tell you something. Some, some of you will admit, there's been about a hundred times that if she had said, I said, come in, I said, I'm quitting. Had she said, okay, let's quit. I would have. You know what she did? She'd say, no, it's not that bad. You got to keep on. You know, and really I was glad deep down inside when you say, you got to keep on going. You know, you can't quit now. You, you know, you got to go. Man, a lot of times in school and, and, and jobs and work, just, just ready. And she'll say, seem like the Lord. I don't know what Bull Bramick said one time. He said he thought his wife was the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but strange how a lot of times God will use that woman to speak to my heart, straighten me out, keep me on the right path. What I'm trying to say, ladies, is I thank God for a godly woman. Every man in here thanks God for a godly woman. And so I'm not perfect. Nobody is, but you just... You, you keep in mind. I want, you, I want to get down to the practical things here. If you're a godly woman, you've been doing these things. The Word of God says, now there's the last days that you're in. You see, there's a different setup. This is perilous times for our young people tonight. It's perilous times for me. It's perilous time for a preacher anywhere. It's perilous, it's perilous times for you in church. It's perilous times for you on your job. It's per, for, for a believer, it's perilous times because you can fall just like that. You can quit just like that because all of these things are after you. The God of this world is very smart. Of course, that's Satan. That's what the Word of God says, the God of this world. He's blinded the minds of them that believe not. That's the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. So in these days, there's another spirit operating. The Holy Spirit over here be poured out upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters prophesy. Your young men see visions. Your old men dream dreams. And man, you're talking about the blessings of, of God. God shows outward manifestation. Think those things are going to be fulfilled over here. But for the time being, God has set this age aside. It's an age of grace. And here you are, you're in this age of grace. And I don't mean by that that the church is going to go over there. We're going to be caught out here before all that. But you're in the last days here, and God says, here's what you're faced with. Now, what can you do? Three things I want to say, and then I threw. And I noticed that, you know, I noted this morning, this is personal. Thee, thou, thy is all in this passage. It's you personally. You can't depend on the church to do it. If you go to hell, it's not my fault. A young person... Uh, you might be able to put a lot of blame everywhere, but I want to tell you something. If you ruin your life, it's your decision. It's yours. You're going to have to decide something, and that's what God God puts the puts the responsibility right on you, each person in here tonight, on me, on each one of us. First of all, you know what you need. Just very practically, number one, you need a godly example. You need. A godly example. Verse 10. Paul said to Timothy. Here's the first thing. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. He said, my manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long suffering, my charity, patience. Listen, you get your eyes off the failures. You get your eyes off the TV stars. You get your eyes off. You find you, if you want to put it like this, you find you a spiritual hero. You know what? You need one. You need one. You, you need somebody who has met the temptations, who has some experience, who've gone, who's gone through some things, and he's a godly example. Now, you're not putting all your stock in him, but you've got a godly example. In other words... Of course, it's not going to be another young person, somebody, see. You're going to find someone that's fought a battle and fought the battle, lived for God. You need a godly example. You know what Paul did? Paul said to Timothy, Thou hast fully known my doctrine. It was Paul's doctrine. 
It wasn't just something he read in the Bible. Paul's manner of life. Paul could hold up his manner of life as an example. Paul said, my purpose. You find you somebody, and I could go over these things. I don't have time to develop this, this like it should be, but I want to tell you something. You find you a godly example. You find you a person, a man or a woman, or several of them, who have had purpose in their life, and, and they, have, they have charged toward that purpose in their life, and they've accomplished it. Listen, I can think of several people right now. For myself, I can think of several people. I know some who've already, who are already with the Lord. In other words, there's no... <laughs> They're not going to fall away. They're not going to get into some sin of emer. I know, I know personally some folks that's already with the Lord Jesus Christ who had purpose, who had faith, who had a good testimony. They're godly examples. And listen, if they can do it, you can do it. Find you a godly example. That's why you ought to spend you some time not reading novels, but spend you some time reading some, reading some lives of men and women, great men and women. Spiritual leaders. And I'm going to tell you about the ones that I have, but I have, I've told you about some of them before. I told you about my English teacher in college, Miss Ruby Wagner, a godly woman. I'm going to tell you something. Miss Wagner could live for the Lord, have a good testimony. Dave Reese can. I had a blind teacher in, in school. If, if Dr. Martin could have such a testimony and be such a sweet Christian character, and I mean, but yet be very firm and, and, and uh, uh, live for God. And, uh, listen, I can. I can. I've, 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 been, I've had the privilege to meet, to meet some, some, I believe, godly preachers that's gone on to glory. Hey, if they could live for God like they did, I can. Listen. You need, you need to see and you need to know somebody in your life. If you can't find them in your community, you need to find them in a book somewhere. You get a, you get a, man, you get a man like uh, John Payton. Gave his life in, the new, in, in getting the gospel out in the Hebrides Islands. You find a man like that. Read about him. Read about him. Learn what he did. David Brainerd. Learn who he was. Thou hast fully known my doctrine. You need a godly example. That's one thing you need. And the second thing that you need is you need a goal in your life. In verse number 14, but continue thou. You need some just hard, just, just, just be very hard-nosed. You need determination. You need to have a goal and have determination to meet that goal. And you're going to go and you're going to do it. You, do, you have a purpose. And you continue in what you're doing. Don't quit for anybody. You remember this. Anybody can quit. Anybody can quit. Many of them do. Anybody can quit. But you keep on. Don't quit. I'm talking about some practical things that you need to face these last days. Godly example. Determination. To reach a goal. A godly goal. And then the third thing is this. Look at verse number 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, that's not sinlessly perfect, that the man of God may be perfect, it's this kind of perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Oh, you're going to have days and you're going to have times when you fail. You have times when you sin. I'm going to tell you something. You get back to this book. All scripture is given inspiration of God's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. 
I've heard it said, and you have too, and it's not, it sounds almost trite, but it's not. This book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. If you stay in the Word of God, I'm talking about if you stay in this book. I'm not talking about coming to church, opening it up, and then going home, closing it. Later. I'm talking about every day. If you stay in this book, this book will equip you to face this stuff right here. Oh, you're going to be bruised, yeah. You're going to get it. You, yeah, you're going to get some cuts and scratches, and you might you might be like a boxer. You might get have to have a few stitches every once in a while. But I'm going to tell you something. The end result will be that the man of God, the woman of God, will be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And this book will do it. Not some experience, not coming up here seeking some kind of experience. Those things come and go. We've had revival meetings here. Now, I've, I've seen folks make great professions, and, and I've done it myself. Oh, I've, I've just had, you know, just on the spur of the moment, just go and say, and I'm not, I'm not against making decisions now, but I'm against putting all my stock in those things. But, you know, there's great times, you're just really burdened for all of this and whatever. But I want to tell you something. The only thing's going to get the job done is not going to come just like that. The thing gets the job done is you get you a godly example. And you see how others did it. And if they did it, you can do it. You get you some grit in your soul, determination in your soul. And you determine, you determine that you're going to make it. You're going to, you're going to do it. You're going to live for God. And then you get your Bible. You open up that Bible and you stick with that book, and I'll tell you this, you stay in it. Learn it. Make it your doctrine, not just doctrine that's in the Bible. Make it your doctrine. And I'll tell you something. You can make it in these last days. You'll live for God. You can do something in these last days. That's the prescription God's got in 2 Timothy 3. Uncle Bud Robinson was a Nazarene preacher. He was tongue-tied. And he preached. God used him. Boy, God used him. He preached all over this land. He went to be the Lord back in 1942. But Uncle Bud Robinson said this, and he was always saying this everywhere he went, and it's kind of like his prayer. And he said, oh, Lord, give me a backbone as big as a saw log and ribs like the sleepers under the church floor. Put iron shoes on me and galvanized breeches and hang a wagon load of determination up in the gable end of my soul and help me to sign the contract to fight the devil as long as I have a vision and bite him as long as I have a tooth and then gum him till I die. My prayer is now that the Lord will turn a hog's head of honey over in your soul and just let it ooze out between your ribs until you'll be so sweet that every bumblebee and honeybee in the settlement will be a buzzing around your doorstep. Uncle Bud Robinson. God used that man. God can use you and God can use me. We follow the directions in this book. Godly example. Determination, the Word of God. Let's stand again. Heavenly Father, this weekend while we.